Much of Baltimore is a food desert. Behind all of the high-end supermarkets in wealthy areas, poor people in restrictive urban environments struggle to get proper nutrition. This development has led to widespread obesity throughout the city. This pattern has been observed in city schools as well. As teacher Patty Kirby says, I see it every day in what students are eating when they come in. There's not a day that goes by that I don't see a student start their day by eating a bag of chips or food from McDonald's. A big problem for people who live in the city is that there are what are called food deserts where there's no place to buy any good food. And the reason there are food deserts is supermarkets are unwilling to open markets in poor neighborhoods. So what poor people are left with is corner stores that serve hot dogs that have been on the rollers for like seven years. Or they can go to a gas station and get a bag of chips, and that's about it. So if you want to get an actual you know, head of lettuce or something, you have to get on a bus and go out to the suburbs. You might be you know, half an hour getting to the market, then getting your shopping done, getting back on a bus and going home. So then, if all you have access to is bad, high-calorie food, it's no wonder that so many people in the city become overweight because they're eating unhealthy food all the time. Corner stores like this one do well to provide basic needs for the community. However, many of them lack any fresh produce. There is a clear cut and ingenious plan to combat these worrying social trends. It comes in the form of urban farms. things about food and also about people and the environment generally is that most people these days have no connection with the actual natural world uh, and that includes the ways that their food is made so if you live in the suburbs you may be able to see some trees or parks but you don't know where your food comes from if you live in the city you might not even see any trees and the only food you get generally comes from like bad fast food restaurants or corner stores that have very little fresh produce. So the advantage of city kids getting onto farms is they not only learn where their food comes from, but they actually get to see the world, they get to see the natural world as it actually functions. Again, with rain and sun and soil, like the, a lot of city kids never see dirt because everything around them is paved. And it's really important for everybody to actually understand the way systems work, whether uh, you're talking about food or whether you're talking about composting or recycling it all comes back to your relationship with the actual natural world and a lot of us have really become divorced from that and city kids have that worse than just about anybody. Urban farms also have a positive environmental and social impact. Urban farming benefits the environment by filling up vacant lots, increasing green space, and reducing runoff. Okay, so think about what are the reasons that urban environments are bad for the environment. One of the reasons is they have so much pavement so that everything that hits the pavement, 
whether it's oil or whether it's you know radiator fluid or whether it's sewage whatever it is it all washes right into the chesapeake bay if instead of pavement what you had was some natural things like food plants or native plants or trees and the soil under that that absorbs the water it absorbs the toxins all that stuff stays and gets filtered down through the ground and then the chesapeake bay doesn't get contaminated Strength to Love 2 Farm in Winchester Sandtown transformed a wasted lot to a fully functioning farm. The farm offers a second chance to ex-offenders and creates a safer environment for the community. If we continue to nourish urban farming in urban areas like Baltimore, we will solve pressing social issues and leave the generations ahead of us with access to healthy foods an improved environment and safer communities.